Hello and welcome to News Click. Tamil Nadu is one of the states which is going for polls in the current year. On April 6, the state will go to vote to decide who is going to rule the state in the next five years. To discuss more about the elections and the propaganda which is on the grounds, we have with us Mr. Vijay Shankar, the editor of Frontline. Welcome, sir, for joining us. Thank so, you. Contrary to the previous elections, uh, Tamil Nadu is witnessing a multi-cornered uh, contest this year. There, are, there is a front led by DMK, ADMK, the Kamala Hassan led uh, party is leading another alliance, and the ADMK splinter group is also having another leading another alliance apart from the uh, Nam Tamil Nadu. So, what is your take yeah. on the division of votes and who may get the advantage of the division of? Uh, before going into this, I want to tell you something about the past history, uh, the recent history of Tamil Nadu elections. Uh, though there have been attempts by another front, third front, actually what is happening is this two-party, two-front dominance has not diminished. Actually, it's still going on. That's what I feel. It's still, uh, I mean, in my opinion, it's a two-race horse. Because I have some reason to say this, because uh, recently we published one article by Mr. Srinivasan, which proved that at least in the last six elections, he took statistics, electoral statistics. There actually, there, there are other players in the last three, four elections, not like fronts, but like Nam uh, Tamil Kachi and other smaller parties were there. But what he has proved it in this election, electoral statistically, he has proved something. Uh, though there were other parties, actually the vote, no, about 75 to 80% of the vote went, went to either of these fronts. So that situation has not changed as uh, even now. That's what I feel. I think that because it, the statistics prove that. And even on the ground, though uh, there are other players like Kamala Hassan and another person who is in the news very often is Nam Tamil Kachi Seeman. Otherwise, uh, there is no other significant player because most of them are with either of these friends. Two friends, ADMK led friend, DMK led friend. So the word split theory, it, it is yet to be proved. We have to see it. Opinion polls show that again this two-party dominance continues. Yes, there was an opinion poll by Pudhiya Talemurai, which showed that mainly other parties like uh, Makkal Nidhimayam, Nam Tamil Kachi are very insignificant. Maybe Makkal Nidhimayam will score some, make some advances in terms of votes in urban areas. Nam Tamil Kachi is not even making that kind of advance. That is the opinion poll. So I don't think there is any major change as of now. In the scene, I think these two friends will share it. But I think the, the, way, the uh, from the ground level reports we get, it is clear that it is remains two uh, two front uh, uh, election. And very interestingly, about in 170 to 80 constituencies, DMK and ADMK are facing each other. Definitely, there is no place for another player in these two 176 or about 176 uh, seats. What is happening in Tamil Nadu is. 2016 assembly election, when Jalilita was alive, such a tall leader was alive, Karnanidhi was alive, then uh, DMK almost managed to come close to power. They won about the alliance, DMK Congress alliance, won about 109 seats, but 109 seats. And the difference between ADMK and the DMK front was just 1%, even when Jalilita was alive. So now Jalilita is not alive. Another factor is, after that election, this Makkal Nala Kutani were left parties, BCK, Vidalai Chirithayal Kachi and Makkal, uh, MDMK and Vijayagans party, they were all together. They tried to make uh, break this uh, the dominance. They were not with the DMK then. But 2019, they all came to DMK. There was a grand coalition which swept the election. So that alliance remains intact even now. But in the case of ADMK, as I explained to you, ADMK after Jalita, it is not as united as it was and AMMK is taking away some votes. What is happening in the South is because of the AMMK factor, this Sashikala took a vow against, uh, that is, she will teach a lesson against Edapadi. She feels betrayed by Edapadi and in a way, Ope Apanir Sivam. So now she has a personal reason to ensure the defeat of the BJP. And AMMK in Southern districts where the ADMK is strong, they are very clear, they made it very open that they are going to defeat of the ADMK is more, though he's uh, Dinakaran, the leader speaks about. Uh, uh, DMK, be, be on the ground, I think they are going to damage ADMK in a big way. And what has contributed to this fact is uh, this one-year reservation. One-year reservation, 10% within MBC uh, has actually reduced the space for reservation for 
uh, this denotified communities like Mukulathur and other sections. No, it has uh, it has been reduced to two percent. So they are all angry with the ruling party for having conceded ten point five percent of the twenty percent to one years. So their their reaction will benefit uh, AMK because AMK AMK's base is again they were Mukulathur. So that. Section again is going to cut into ADMK votes in community wise also, not only politically, community wise. And DMDK, which was part of the uh, DMK alliance last time, DMDK also walked out feeling insulted by ADMK. And they also, they are also not, they are very clear that they are not going to come to power. So they are going to work against, they also vowed to defeat the ADMK this time. So defeating the ADMK with a very powerful combination is working in the southern parts of the Countries. That is what is happening. And Kamala Hassan, Kamala Hassan has some uh, support in the urban areas, urban upper class. So Kamala Hassan's target is mainly DMK. So what, in my opinion, will happen is uh, Kamala Hassan will take away again urban votes which would have gone otherwise to ADMK and BJP. The educated, so-called educated sections, upper class, upper caste sections. One ADMK vote again will erode. So my opinion is, my point is, DMK alliance is intact. There are so many factors which is eroding the ADMK's vote base. They may lose about 10 to 15 percent, which means it's a complete wipeout. And one more factor, ADMK made a blunder, was in the they in the manifesto they promised to name Madurai Airport after Muthramalinga Thevar. Muthramalinga Thevar is the leader of Thevars, and Thevars and Devendra Kula Velalas they don't. You know the traditional rivalry. There were riots in the 1990s. Uh, Devendra Kula Velala, Dalits, Dalits, a section of Dalits. So that uh, has created a lot of resentment. So all these Mukulathur votes again will consolidate behind the AMMK, which will damage the uh, ADMK. That is the scene. One more factor is this Dalit party called Priya Tamilagam. They wanted Devendra Kula Velala. They wanted seven castes to be brought under Devendra name Devendra Kula Velala. They don't want to be called Dalits. So that, so now they are known as, you can't call them Pallars. Pallars are the main, major group. So Devendra Kula Velalar, when you say, call them Devendra Kula Velalar, the real Velalas, no? they are resenting it. They are not equal. So this caste factor is going to damage the uh, ADMK in the south. That is the real scene. In urban areas, Makal Nalakutani, uh, that is the Makal Nidhi Mayam, will also cut into ADMK votes. So, in my opinion, because of these factors, ADMK is going to be the real loser. Sir, another uh, major player, or they claim to be so, is the Bharatiya Janata Party. So, after aligning yeah. with the ADMK in the general election, they are uh, again aligned with the uh, same party and are contesting in yeah. uh, 20 seats. So, even though their yeah. uh, record is dismal, their uh, sister organizations or the Sang Parivar organizations have been doing different kind of groundworks in different parts of the state. Do you think that okay. this, these groundworks will benefit the BJP in these 20 states? No, not at all. See, this groundwork, it is happening. Actually, what they are doing is they are approaching uh, temples. No? They first go to temple. They build some kind of um, organization around temple. They mobilize people. But it's too late in the day. And basically, the problem, BJP's problem is, it is completely, it has managed to alienate uh, people of Tamil Nadu with a lot of things which they did, with the kind of rhetoric they, uh, they've been, uh, they're talking about Hindi, Sanskrit. And interestingly, BJP's candidate list is in English and Hindi in Tamil Nadu, which is, uh, which is ridiculous. People are very angry about it. So BJP, whatever they do on the ground may have some impact in the long run. BJP's real chance or any party, any non dravidian party's chance may emerge only after this election because this election remains a, a kind of a competition between the two parties. But what is happening is uh, ADMK after Jailitha's demise, actually it's highly divided. One, uh, this chief minister and deputy chair, actually the chief minister and deputy, they don't get along. It's very clear and uh, their differences are in the open and they try to and somehow the BJP is trying to keep them united. It's very clear. And AMMK, Amma Makkal Munetra Karagam, which is founded by Sashikala's uh, nephew. And that party is also, uh, remains outside this setup, ADMK setup. So what is happening is ADMK is slowly is on the vein. Slowly it's going to lose its base. It's already losing its base. Uh, they're so divided. So in this situation, 
definitely uh, this two party uh, system no in, in uh, that is duopoly they call it uh, two party dominance definitely after this election uh, most probably if they, uh, what i think is like, dmk is going to win the election hands down after that admk party is facing a big existential crisis there is no charismatic leader one uh, common complaint against uh, local people even admk cadre somehow they don't find this leader is very attractive these both the leaders cps and ops and they are highly divided also and they are divided in caste lines caste caste lines also because the ops belongs to this um, mukulatur community which is dominant in the south and and they also built the party like that they built their, their bases among their caste groups he is from uh, eps is from kongubelala community which is dominant in the western region so what uh, bjp or any party i am not looking at bjp's chance in tamil nadu i am there is a possibility of some space opening up this is the first time after 60, 67 dmk came to power uh, they have been alternately ruling their state first time after this election in the last uh, next 5 or 10 years there may be a, really there is, there is going to be a space for uh, there will be a space definitely who is going to take it and bjp with uh, its powers, hold over the power uh, hold over power at the center it has been trying to do, take this space and they are keeping completely dm edmk leaders are completely uh, they are not uh, asserting themselves they are not in a mood to do it because they want to be in power they wanted to be there edmk remained united only because four years after jailita's death they had power that is why they remained united otherwise edmk would have split long back or would have dis- not disappearing slowly the erosion is happening so, so dmk so even that, bjp bjp uh, will be growing at the expense of admk bjp no no they claim that they are the, the bjp has presence in almost all the villages uh, not all the village but it is happening what is happening is they are recruiting local youth unemployed youth and they build uh, they bring them around and they they put them in temple committees and they are given all powers so, now you do whatever you want this is what is happening on the ground whatever you want you do it on the ground in the name of temple they could go for collections so if there is some action we'll we'll take it because our state power is with us central power is also with us so with that they are trying to infiltrate and uh, see what has happened is over a period even the dravidian movement this because the dilution of dravidian ideology is stark in admk because even karnanidhi mr karnanidhi till his last moment he hold held on to it in dmk even, even now you'll find lot of people talking about ideology social justice in adnk you don't find this letter rhetoric at all jailita they she ensured that 69% reservation but what is happening is there is no real ideological basis for adnk's adnk they don't talk about it at all at least dmk there is some talk of all the social justice language all these issues they keep it alive in the case of adnk they are completely uh, there is an ideological uh, vacuum vacuity you know that will that so it is easy to attract admk at least the leaders you know what one likely scenario is with the power bjp is going to be power in on in power for some more at the center it's going to be power for some more years so with that they can actually attract lot of admk leaders at the state and district levels but on the ground uh, we don't know what is going to happen because cadre see after jailita's mgr actually there is a if you look at admk history mgr from the party after that uh, after his demise jailita continued and there was split in the party later she took hold of the party but M- jailita ensured that mgr is also forgotten she used to in- invoke mgr's name only at the time of elections now what has happened to jailita after her demise you know that name doesn't evoke any emotion even now people in villages talk about mgr the loyalty to mgr still there but jailita doesn't command any loyalty jailita's loyalty whatever the loyalty is out of fear and out of the fact that only she can win elections even all these leaders they were loyal to her only for one reason this loyalty is very superficial they knew that only she can win elections now in the last two years you don't hear much about jailita they don't talk about it. some they always talk about amma but even now what is happening is if you go to chennai marina uh you have you can see hundreds of people visiting mgr samadhi and jailita samadhi but i don't think this admk cadre on the ground they don't have any kind of great attachment to the party any longer 
So this space is going to be important. So BJP also, I think, has a long-term plan. So with, with their power at the center, they will try to capture or they'll try to bring in uh, district level and local leaders with a lot of other methods. No, Not only, you know, how BJP uses agencies against top people. And at the lower level, you have, you they will offer anything to bring leaders. So the real danger or whatever, uh, in my opinion is, this middle level leadership and top level leadership without any comms, they may go and join BJP. So that is, uh, then there is a possibility for BJP. In this election, I don't think there is any scope for any, you know, they can't even win a single seat. That is a ground situation. Thank you.